today we're able to inspect a utility solar farm like 100%. This has never wow. really been possible. The robots like run in four different autonomous driving programs all at once, GPS, object detection, computer vision driving. All of this is happening in real time, milliseconds. While it's also processing, you know, all of the wires, modules, and inspecting all of the array, and taking the pictures, downloading the data, and putting it up. All this is happening simultaneously where we have an NVIDIA computer on board. So that's, that's the cool thing about the robot is its payload capacity. You know, if you've seen the robot, it has a big thermal camera on it. We can just continue to load this thing up. It's 500 pounds. It's got a big battery. We, it has a huge payload. So it can do a lot of things all at once. I think by the time we're done, we will substantially reduce the risk of solar sites. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my hope. On site today, we use robotics and computer vision to inspect large utility solar farms. Think of a Roomba on a solar farm with a camera that can automatically inspect uh, modules, wiring, et cetera, um, and report all that information back instantaneously. Like if we find a problem, we're able to get that information to a customer right away and they can address something if it's of high risk. Um, there's no lag in the uh, reporting. And then most recently, we're really excited to announce um, um, our OWL product, which is a smoke and fire detection uh, device that you can put on commercial roofs or solar farms to detect uh, smoke and fire outside. Um, and that's really, we have kind of two high tech levels of the company. One's autonomous navigation and how do you maneuver around a site uh, using autonomous navigation. And um, the other is computer vision and how do we identify things on the site, whether they're good or bad or count them, et cetera. Um, and today we're able to inspect um, a utility solar farm like 100 percent. This has never wow. really been possible. Without human intervention, basically. Uh, for the most part. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. The holy grail is push a button, robot scans the entire site. Right. And so there's aspects to it that are still manual today that we're working through. How much of it is integrating machine learning such that like a Roomba, the robot starts to learn the terrain and, and that kind of element? Yeah, there's multi-levels to autonomous navigation. I've had to like kind of learn all this. We're, we got really lucky and we brought on uh, Brandon Seitz. Um, he was the head of autonomous navigation for, um, for Trimble and Lockheed Whoa. Martin. Um, and he really, we, we have an amazing team of PhDs and just really high level folks. So I think we've got a high ceiling, but um, got to learn a lot about autonomous navigation. First, you have to implement... Um, um, object detection so we don't run into things. That's like number right. one of of everything is safety. So you kind of start there. Just like, and a lot of it is we're really familiar with how this has evolved in our cars, right? Like yeah. first you back up, car automatically stops when you're about to hit something or beeps or whatever, right? Um, then there's like lane following. Okay, well, when we're in a row of modules, now we can use the row of modules. It was actually kind of a lucky happenstance that these rows create these like lanes for us. Right. And really all you have to do is keep the robot in the middle of the lanes. And <clears throat> so you don't have to really use GPS in that circumstance. You could use cameras um, to, to handle the autonomous navigation in that regard. So as you build these layers, you're using them all and you're cross-referencing them all. So yeah. that's, that's the big thing. Uh, there's a, there's a compute problem happening there. So you got to think the robots like running four different yeah. uh, autonomous driving programs all at once, GPS, object detection, um, uh, computer vision driving. All of this is happening in real time, milliseconds, while it's also processing, um, you know, all of the wires, modules and inspecting all of the array and taking the pictures, downloading the data and put it up. All this is happening simultaneously where uh, we have an NVIDIA computer on board. So that's that's the cool thing about the robot is its payload capacity. Yeah. So if you look at, you know, if you've seen the robot, it has a big thermal camera on it. It has, we can just continue to load this thing up. It's 500 right. pounds. It's got a big battery. We, it has a huge payload. So yep. um, we can put a big computer on there with a lot of processing power. Um, and it can do a lot of things all at once. Um where this stuff really wasn't possible a couple, like even just a couple of years ago, you couldn't do what we're doing today. I'm glad you went there because that's my next couple of questions, actually. So let's back up for a second and give folks perspective who've never been on a solar site of 
what solutions exist or existed in the 2021 timeframe that you started iterating and innovating around the idea of how to do this with robots? Um, how is this traditionally done? How were you doing it with SST? Like, what is this replacing? Yeah, really, the only way is to go walk around the site, right? And so walking yeah. around is one thing. That's a and huge the pain in the ass already. Yeah. Right? And the interface for that walking around is, is a tablet, some sort of a... Yeah, most of the time you'll have a cell phone. I'm, mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody's using a tablet. It's probably a little big to carry around. Uh -huh. uh, so you have a cell phone. Eventually, people started making all these different apps. Yeah. So then there was like work order apps became like the yep. thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we used Salesforce uh, Service Lightning or whatever it was, uh, yeah. which was decent. But if you think about it, if you're a person, um, you're you're walking around, you're taking these pictures. Every time you find something wrong, you have to take a picture. You have to sit in there. You got to type it in. And then you take three more steps. What happens if you see something else? What happens if you run into 28 issues in a row? You're going to be pretty tired of recording. I think that's one thing we don't get enough credit for with the robot. We kind of, or, or at least our customers take it a little bit for granted, yeah. is that when we take a picture, it's thermal, it's 4K, we can zoom yeah. in, we can document it really well. And that work order is done. And that's all done 100% remotely. There's nobody out in the field doing this with and, the phone. And virtually instantly. Yeah, instantly. Yeah. And processed through the computer vision, like all of that happens. And by know, the way, after um, the 20th photo on the 13th row, uh, there's some zero fatigue to the robot. Yeah, it'll, I mean, we scan. <laughs> there's no there's no like efficiency loss in photo taking capacity or information sending capacity. <laughs> yeah, the most he's not, laborious he's not asking for coffee. <laughs> the, the boringest task the robot does is the barcode scanning. And that's just like what is it? Where every, is the barcode? Um, so it'll scan like the QR code. Oh, it actually doesn't scan the QR code. We take a picture of it, a high res picture. Uh, we actually we're running live video. Sorry, is it's every actually, solar panel equipped with a barcode? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Every solar panel has like a QR code or a mm -hmm. barcode on the back. And mm -hmm. some of the scope of work after you're done with the project is that people want to know where all of the serial numbers of all the right. modules are so that if there is a defect, they can go pinpoint exactly, you know, on the production line, they could find out exactly where it is. Are you and creating so, digital twins in real time of plants that didn't have them? Yeah, everything we do uh, gets plotted on a digital twin map. How yep. cool is that? What, and we can use everybody's digital twin. We're not, you know, um, right. So like, like Raptor Japanese, maps Raptor and all these others or that Heliolytics do, yeah. or any of these folks. Yeah, right. we don't we don't mind. Beautiful. You know, the coolest thing is, and you guys probably thought about this, um, I'm, I'm just inventing things right now on the fly, but like, I can imagine that your robot in three to five years with AI on board is going to start finding problems we didn't know existed. And it's going to do so because it's catching up on the smallest variances that a human wouldn't have captured without a level of detailed inspection that would have heretofore been cost prohibitive, meaning just exactly what you're saying. We don't do... 100% DC commissioning because it's cost prohibitive and it's time prohibitive. And we can just give them a contract to fix any errors that come up for the next 10 years instead of spending all that money up front, which nobody wants to spend. Man, fascinating. Yeah, I mean, you'll find uh, maybe electrical connection that's not totally failed, uh, but it's, it's hotter than it should be. And there's mm -hmm. more resistance than there should be. That may take five years to fail. Yeah, but we we know about it right now, uh, mm -hmm. where nobody knew about that before. So that's why I'm thinking, you know, people are coming in year three, four, five, and they're going, "Oh, these things are, you know, something happened out here." I'm like, "Nothing happened. This happened five years ago." I think it's really clever and interesting the way that you adopt um, the Wall E sort of moniker for it, because um, you actually talk about and this is you at a demo day or your tech day, but this is the on-site robot out in the field. And damn if it doesn't look just like wall E. I mean, I think this alone speaks to the um, the design chops of your team just to be able to say, hey, we don't even really need it to look like it's like other AGE, right? Like we can tap into the zeitgeist of like, this was good enough for Disney. It's good enough for us. Um, and it's really, it's just really uh, nice looking and clever. 